That's awesome. Uh, what are some other cool characters, Brent? Uh, we have Wendy, voiced by Linda Cardinelli. Wendy is a laid-back and cool teenager who works at the Mystery Shack as Dipper's initial crush. She becomes a close friend to both Dipper and Mabel. Wendy is known for her honesty, wisdom beyond her years, and her affinity for skateboarding. Wendy's one of my personal favorites. Like, she's just a neat character mm-hmm. who, like, she doesn't appear a lot in the first season. Like, she, it takes her a while before she really starts becoming a, a main character. Because, like, she's even in the intro. Mm-hmm. Like, the intro uh, video and everything. But, like, she really doesn't make a big impact on the show until a little bit into season one. Right. But then she becomes much more, she's seen much more often. Uh, after that she's largely there to give dipper that crush relationship but it's also largely because dipper's on the verge of you know becoming 13 which is this really weird time in in kids life where you feel like you're old enough to to want to be doing adult things now because you're a teenager right at the same time your brain is like hell now be a kid still like do the fun (laughs) stuff so He's he's in this really weird space where he's trying to figure out who he is or who he's going to be as, you know, as an adult. And I think Wendy is the the perfect counterpart to this for, okay. for the relationship because she is supposed to be the older um every boy's dream girl sort of right. thing. Right, kind of girl next door type deal. Right, and I, th- I think that just her demeanor and the fact that she includes Dipper and in hanging out with like her older cool friends is, uh, is such, such a cool way to help Dipper develop into this older character. I, I really do like how um, this show doesn't try to make it creepy, but like Mabel kind of points that out later in the show. They're like, yeah, like it's kind of creepy that you're like into her. Like you're 12 years old. She's like, I think 15 yeah, or so. Like and then later down the line, there's a, uh, this is not even a spoiler. There's a, there's a scene where like they go back in time and, uh, <laughs> Dipper and Mabel run into a younger Wendy who's nine years old, I believe, at the time. And she says, oh, you're you're cute. And Dipper's <laughs> like, oh, hey, thanks, I guess. And Mabel's like, yeah, see, this is how it is when you with you and her in the future. And he's like, oh, 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 oh gross. Because, oh. yeah, three year difference. She's 15. He's 12. But shit, back in time, she's nine and he's 12. And he's like, yeah, that feels weird. I don't like this. <laughs> yeah, but again, at the same time, though, like it's, I don't know, it's the, the, the maturity level of both of them where he's trying to get to her, to her maturity level pretty much because that's, you know, what growing up and being an adult uh, is to him is, uh, you know, finding finding these common interests that she likes because she's a cool adult. So he has to try to, you know, have these same interests so that he can be a cool adult and then right. he can get the girl. And I think it is a little different. Oh, no. Yeah. I just think it's kind of just a funny moment where like he had, he got to see a switched perspective mm-hmm. on it. And he's like, oh, damn. Oh, no. A whole three years. Yeah. yeah. It's weird <laughs> when you're talking about kids, but let's not yeah. make it weird. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, Bill Cipher. Uh, also voiced by Alex Hirsch. Uh, Bill Cipher is the main antagonist of Gravity Falls, who is an otherworldly, all-knowing demon who appears as a floating yellow triangle with a top hat and an eye inside of it. Bill Cipher represents chaos, mystery, and manipulation, making him one of the most memorable characters in the show. Yeah, I thought he was just going to be like a one-off character, but like his reoccurring like presence in the show mm-hmm. has helped. Like he's part of an overarching plot, you know, of the show, and his his involvement gets bigger and bigger as the show goes on, and that's such a cool thing. Like he is, yeah, he's he's amazing. He's such a cool character. Now, originally, the the main villain was actually going to be the uh, the little pig nosed kid, little Gideon. Gideon, yeah, little, little Gideon. Gideon. It, originally, it was going to be him, um, but they decided that his character was just turning out to not be strong enough to continue uh, like an ongoing, like reoccurring, like villain sort of right. thing. So when they introduced Bill Cipher, uh, they kind of put little Gideon on a back burner and um he he played a lesser role where he was still around but he just kind of became another character as part of the town 
Right. You know, like he just came like a, a reoccurring villain of the week when builds kind of like got bigger and bigger mm-hmm. and then mystery around him kept growing. Yeah. Uh, where Gideon kind of felt to a point where he was just like, eh, Gideon again, you know, like it, I don't know. It just, yeah, I can see why they gave up on him being the big bad of the, uh, the show because mm-hmm. he just didn't have what it takes. Yeah. Now talk about my boy, my favorite, my favorite uh, repair man, Seuss. Seuss Ramirez, also voiced by Alex Hirsch. Legend. <laughs> right. Seuss is an amiable and lovable handyman at the Mystery Shack. He is known for his simple-mindedness, love of junk food, and unwavering loyalty to the Pines family. Seuss provides much of, much of the show's comic relief and acts as a trusted friend to Dipper and Mabel. Seuss is also based off of a real-life friend he had at Cal, uh, at Cal Arts, uh, whose name was Jesus. Ha! And he went through like when when finding the voice actor for some of these uh, was really meticulous like uh seuss he said he kept finding people that would try to do like the oh sup dude like the california like oh let's go get some snacks dude like and he was like no it's not quite like he he wanted somebody to really fit you know the person that he remembers from cal arts which right. honestly largely is seuss ramirez uh it's there's there's so many similarities between these two that he's like this character is almost like one to one like not that jesus was like uh dumb or anything by any means but he would be like the kind of person that's like oh man you got like a you got an f on that final exam oh that sucks anyway here's a fruit roll up (laughs) (laughs) oh my god i can see seuss doing that yeah right and he would just uh just the, the the random like he would jump from one thing to another be totally unrelated uh, and just you'd, you'd, you'd question how his mind got there, like sort of thing. It's really funny. Dude, no, he is such a cool character. Like he's super kind to everybody. He's just like the big lovable giant. Cause he's like a bigger dude. Yeah. He's got this unwavering loyalty. Like we talked about to the Pines family. Um, he, he's even made a couple jokes that he looks at, uh, uh, Stan Pines is like his, uh, father figure because like he didn't have a father growing up mm. uh and he's even he's been mentioned like all right win this you know make the family fall in love with you make mr pines at want don't want to adopt you as his long lost son okay we got this <laughs> we got this dudes uh he always uses the term dudes and you know he's just a just a fun guy and like mm. there's one episode that's Actually, there's a couple episodes like that, like focus around him, but like one episode in general where it talks about like how why he doesn't like his birthday is that that's actually like that's kind of like adult like stuff, man. Like yeah. you know, it, a lot of kids probably have grown up with in similar situations like Some that. It's, heavy stuff, man. yeah. Like and that's why like I really can appreciate Zeus as a character, and it is Zeus S O O S, not Zeus. But Seuss, yep. Uh, it's it's. I didn't get that. It took me a while before uh, before I got that. But mm-hmm. overall, like great show. It's all these characters, and there's so many characters. Like we talked about little Gideon. We talk. Uh, Wendy's dad and family are a bunch of big redheaded lumberjacks, and her dad's always like punching something or mm-hmm. throwing something or fighting something. The multi bear. The multi bear. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Dude, the multi bear was fucking hysterical. I know they. I don't remember who it was that they got uh, to to voice the multi bear. I know it was somebody that was like they. So they almost always had like a famous uh, other celebrity or something come in. Oh, and so do many a character. I don't remember who the multi bear was specifically, but uh, Alex was talking about how he's trying to give direction for how to play the multi bear, and he's like, "How do I tell this guy that he's going to be playing a bear that has?" made of bears and his arms are bears and his hands are bears <laughs> <laughs> everything and, is and, uh, bears he's, like, trying to explain how th- how this bear is like you know what this bear's motivation is and he's just like i'm just gonna go in there and do it <laughs> it's like okay <laughs> that sounds good now get this this show like we talked about earlier has so many guest stars in it i'm not gonna go over what characters they played but you have characters like nick offerman voicing characters you yep. have jennifer coolidge jk simmons uh don dimaggio uh tj miller alfred molina uh oh my god like if you don't know any of these characters you're crazy uh will forte uh neil degrasse tyson yeah like i heard him in one of the episodes i'm like 
Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah. And my girlfriend's like, who's that? I'm like, space guy? What? I'm like, <laughs> the guy who knows all about space? And I showed her a picture. She's like, oh, that guy? I'm like, yeah, that guy. We also got John Oliver. Like, the show has a stacked cast. And it is... Oh my god, oh, uh, Kevin Michael Richardson voices so many characters in this show. Like, y- you'll know who, who I'm talking about once you, uh, you know, listen to it. But like I said, oh my god, this show, the characters. Uh, we have the reporter who never seems to actually hold an actual mic. It's always like a, like a turkey baster or a brush yeah. or something. And he's like, oh, uh, oh Mi- I'm this guy from News Weekly. Do you? Uh, yeah. Like, what's his name? I, I can't uh, fucking remember his name. I don't remember. The, the 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 crazy old guy uh, oh my in god town, yeah like the hillbilly guy the hill yeah hillbilly like who like he constantly gets like more character growth and like backstory than a lot of other characters uh lazy susan uh the two police officers that are just uh, oh the, the, the there's the the two girls that are um really good friends oh, with uh, Mabel from candy the and Gr- glenda glenda yeah <laughs> or Dude. a grenda or glenda oh, maybe or... it was grenda Oh yeah, it's Grenda. Yeah, Grenda. <laughs> so Grenda, yeah, she's a little girl, but she's got like she's like really big, and she's like Grenda talks like this. <laughs> so Grenda was played by uh, a guy Carl Forlow. Yeah, Forlow. And um, oh shit, what did you say the other girl's name was? Uh, Candy. Candy. Yeah. So she like they they came together as this pair, and what's great is the two. Uh, voice actors who play them are like really good friends in real life, and that's just like her natural voice. Yep. Uh, is uh, when she when she uh, does uh, voice uh, voice for Candy. Yep, uh, Nikki Yang. Uh, I feel bad because like I don't remember a lot of these characters' names, but like they make so many appearances in the show that it just you know who they are. Yep. Um, and you know this show, like we said, we cannot we cannot go we cannot stop talking about how good the show is on Google reviews. Check this out. Out of five uh, five star reviews, this show has a four point nine out of five. So nice. damn near perfect yes. with a 100% Rotten Tomatoes score and an 8.9 out of 10 on IMDb. Uh, so this show is, don't take our word for it, take some of these people like Kamitha Francisco, uh, who gave it a five-star review. As someone who has seen this show about a, about a several times, I can tell you that this show will be a great ride for anyone who watches this. I watched Gravity Falls back in 2018. I was about 11 years old at the time. Adventure Time has just ended and it made a huge it left a huge void in my heart. Uh, me and my brother desperately wanted to watch another show that could take our minds off Adventure Time's amazing finale. We thought about watching either Star versus The Forces of Evil or Gravity Falls. And end up going with Gravity Falls. I do not regret it. I don't either. Like it's yeah, because we oh my god, we, when you and I were roommates, we watched Adventure Time all the time. It was always Adventure Time in this household. Uh, but no, nah, this show absolutely is amazing. I cannot wait to keep uh, keep watching. I like I said, I got like three or five episodes left, um, mm-hmm. and I cannot wait. It's been absolutely amazing so far. Something that I do have, and I meant to bring it, I totally forgot. So those journals uh, that are that are in you know the, in the series, they only cover three of them. But on the shelf, I believe there was like space for four or five. Um, so that's one thing that fans were like, okay, you could do more about you know these missing journals. They later went on to do a, a short graphic novel series where I have what is uh, supposed to be, I think, the equivalent of book four or journal four. Oh shit! So okay. I have like it's an, a nice little like hardbound uh, graphic novel book that's an amazing story. It's been a while since I've read it, but I remember I loved every second of it. Courtney got it for uh, I think it was for my birthday, Aww. like four or five years ago, something like that. Back nice. when I actually watched it, dude, so fucking good. Uh, well, hey, I want to thank everybody for listening to our wonderful podcast. I hope you enjoyed. Um, you can catch uh, more of our stuff at the barn on all of their social media platforms like mm-hmm. YouTube. Uh, you can uh, YouTube is like their big thing, so go do it. Hit yeah. the hit the notification, give us a follow, a like, a share, 
Uh, subscribe. Uh, leave a comment. Subscribe. Ring the bell. Do the <laughs> do all the do all of it. Do all the YouTube things. Yeah, yeah. just do all of it. Right. Uh, I want to thank Schminkadelic for the use of our intro and outro. You can catch more of his fancy dance and trance tunes on Apple Music and Spotify. And you know we have a special guest coming up on our next episode. Ooh, and our mm. next episode is uh, going to be our Halloween episode. Yes, yeah, so and... we got a good episode picked out for you. We got a great guest for you. It may or may not be Schminkadelic himself talking about his favorite anime along with us and i will say i've been watching it i'm not gonna say what it is yet but i'm having a lot more fun with it than i thought i would Ooh, cool I, show. can i can i tell you what cool i show. how i've been feeling about the said show that we're gonna do next i know you haven't liked it i still don't like it <laughs> that's so still weird. don't like it that's so weird to me i, I even had why. i even had my girlfriend watch it with me and she was like eh <laughs> that's so weird i don't know i'm trying i'm still trying to i'm like five episodes in again and i'm just like eh, i don't know i don't know what's stopping me from enjoying it yeah i i don't know it's i don't know maybe like i just have better taste yeah <laughs> yeah like the taste of covid hey man and licking those toilet seats i told you not to do it hey with even with covid i could still taste better <laughs> things God. yeah right well hey everybody thanks again for listening this has been The Men of Zen. My name is Brent. And I'm Phil. And stay Zen. Stay Zen now. B roll. <laughs> <laughs>